So, in today's video, I'm going to show you everything that you need to learn to be able to build your own Python web app. And not only that, I'm going to show you the best places to learn those topics that you're going to need to be able to understand in order to put it all together. But before I do that, I just want to tell you a little bit about today's sponsor, Fast Hosts, and their Techie Test competition. Now, Fast Hosts, let me write a question for their Techie Test. If you're based in the UK and you know the answer to the question, then you have the chance to win your own work from home setup worth up to £5,000. The link is in the description and I'm going to tell you more about it later on. So, how to build a web app using Python. Now, this is a really good thing to do because, you know, you learn by doing. You don't just learn from reading books and following tutorials. In fact, if you only do that, you reach a point where it slows your learning down because you're not putting anything into practice. And there's nothing like having a project that you actually want to accomplish for motivating you to keep going and also providing you with challenges that you have to solve. So the project itself sort of fills in the gaps in your knowledge because it, it demands that you fill those gaps in in order to get it working. But wanting to get to the end of the project keeps you motivated. So it's a very good way to learn. And it's definitely, if, you know, if you've got somewhere in your head uh, an idea for a web app that you want to create, then I would definitely say go ahead and do it because you'll learn so much by doing it. Now, I've created a little roadmap here of, of things that you need to know in order to be able to develop a web app from start to end. You might already know some of these. So if you do, just skip over those bits. Uh, you might have never coded before, and that's fine too, because it's a complete roadmap here that will take you from novice, someone that's never done this before, in, uh, to someone that actually can complete the creation of a web app. Let's now go through the individual subjects and topics that you're going to need to be able to know and understand in order to be able to get your web app up and running and built and working. Your app's gonna have to be displayed. There's gonna have to be some kind of structure to it when people interact with it, when they go onto their browser, and it's gonna have to look nice. And for that, you're going to need to know HTML and CSS. Now, um, Mozilla, the uh, developer site of Mozilla, MDN, has some really good uh, resources for learning HTML and uh, CSS. And actually they have very good resources about other web technology as well. So I would definitely recommend that you start by reading this page here. Now, you don't have to read everything. It just dep you know, depends on how interested you are in everything, but definitely take a look at the HTML and CSS. You'll realize that HTML is quite easy to pick up. There's quite a lot to CSS. And you, know, you could devote a lot of time to learning CSS, but really you want to learn just enough CSS in order to be able to get your web app working. And that's why when you realize that you're not gonna know CSS well enough in order to be able to get it to do exactly what you want it to do, you're gonna to turn to Bootstrap. Now, Bootstrap is a framework for CSS. This is the um, page for Bootstrap. Read through the introduction and read some of the documentation. And because now you know a little bit of HTML and a little bit of CSS, Bootstrap will make more sense. You're gonna to have to keep referring back to Bootstrap, the Bootstrap documentation and the examples. There are lots of examples. It's, it's very well explained on their site. And there are, you know, there's example uh, here. If you have a look, there are example little bits of code and snippets that will show you how to do various different things. And you're gonna to have to keep referring back to this as you build your web app. So you don't need to know Bootstrap you know, inside out, but just have an idea of how it works uh, well enough in order to be able to use it when you start building your web app. Now, the Techie Test competition from today's sponsor, Fast Hosts, is coming up. If you're based in the UK, it'll give you the chance to win the ultimate work from home setup worth up to £5,000. And you just click on the link in the description to enter the competition. But before I ask that question, I just want to tell you about today's sponsor. And they have two products in particular, which I think might be of interest to you. 
Fast Hosts is a UK web hosting company and they offer a wide range of web hosting products. Now there are a couple that I think could be very well suited to you, especially if you're building a web app. There are the virtual private servers, which start from just one pound a month and they would be perfect for hosting a small web app. And then if you want to blog about your learning journey on a WordPress site, there's the WordPress hosting, which is easy to set up and it too costs just one pound per month for the first six months and you get a free domain for the first year. So now to the techie test question. Which popular Python framework was created by Armin Ronacker? You can answer by clicking on the link in the description. Good luck in the competition. Okay, now you're gonna to need to be able to put in some backend functionality. In order to do that, you're gonna to need to learn Python. Now I'm assuming you probably know a little bit of Python, or you might know a lot. If you don't know any, you're gonna to need to learn it. So go to the uh, Python tutorial on the actual Python website. This is a really good place to learn. It often gets overlooked in, uh, when people are recommended, recommending learning resources. Actually, the documentation is a good place to start with Python because they have a nice tutorial. You don't need to work your way through all of this tutorial, just pick and choose the bits that you know, you're not so sure about. If you're coming to this from nothing, then I would start at one here and go up to nine, just after classes and uh, inheritance. So get to the end of nine and generator expressions here. You don't need to go through the whole standard library, uh, but I would recommend that you take a look at this section 12 on virtual environments and packages. Okay, so now you know HTML, CSS, you know about Bootstrap, and you know some Python. So now you can get going on building your web app. You're gonna have a choice. You're gonna to have to choose a web framework. Now the popular ones are Flask, Django, and Fast API. Fast API is an interesting one, um, but I would recommend Flask because there's a lot of documentation on Flask. There's not quite so much on Fast API because it's much newer. Uh, and Flask is quite simple to learn, although there's a lot to it, so it can do quite a lot, uh, but, but it's sort of modular, so you can learn it in bits. Now, if you're going to learn Flask, I would recommend that you start off with this Corey Schaefer tutorial on Flask. Work your way all the way through it. Follow through the code, there's 15 videos here. I think it is the best introduction to Flask for a beginner that I have seen. Out of a lot of stuff, I think this is the best one. So start with that. And that works through building up a whole block that you can build from scratch. Once you've done that, and now you have some understanding of Flask, if you were considering buying something, and there's no need to buy anything, you can learn all of this for free, but if you did want a book, the book that I would recommend, and I have been through many books, is this one from Pact Publishing. It's Flask Framework. Um, so take a look at that. But as I said, it's not essential, but if you do want a book, this is the one I would recommend. Okay, other resources that are gonna be useful for you after you've been through that Corey Schaefer tutorial. The Flask Mega Tutorial uh, by Miguel Grimberg. This is very good too, and it will sort of, you'll realize when you've been through one tutorial, as you start trying to build your app, there are things that you don't quite understand. Uh, so you can read about them in other tutorials just to try to, to see them explained in a different way. So that's the value of the Miguel Grimberg. It's, it's a very well put together tutorial. Uh, and another resource that I would recommend, now again, I'm not saying you should read through all of these ones. Once you get to the Corey Schaefer one and you've been through that, you can pick and choose from these. But this is a great resource as well from Hackers and Slackers build Flask apps. And as you can see here, it's broken down into individual subjects. There will be things here that you don't understand as you're putting your app together. I would recommend this as a good resource as well. Next, we come to the documentation. It is always important to read the documentation. And the Flask documentation, I've seen it criticized actually for not being too well explained, but I think it's pretty good. And especially if you go to the tutorial here, work through this tutorial, which is again about how to use Flask to create a blog. And that may fill in some gaps that you have in your knowledge so far when you've come this far in, uh, in the sort of learning Flask roadmap. 
it's very useful to refer to things in the documentation. So if there's something in a tutorial that you see and you don't quite understand why it's been done that way or you don't understand the explanation, go to the Flask documentation and see how it's been explained there. Okay, a few other little things that I think you're going to find interesting, a few other little resources. This is a book that will teach you Python and then Flask, but here it's got a nice little introduction to databases. Now you're going to have to understand databases if you want to create an app that really does anything because it's going to have to store data and manipulate data in some way. You might not know anything about databases, so this is a good place to start. And then move on to here. Now again, this is just filling in the gaps in your knowledge as you encounter any problems. So I would recommend exploreflask.com and the section on storing data. Take a look at that. And finally, the just general sort of catch-all is Full Stack Python. Go to Full Stack Python and on here you will see a list of resources that will be quite useful to you. And some of the resources listed here I've already recommended, but there are a lot of other ones as well. Don't get stuck in the trap of just looking for more and more and more resources. And that's what I'm trying to do with this roadmap for you. I think I've whittled down and found the best resources, uh, so you don't have to waste time looking for resources or reading endless tutorials. Use these to get the knowledge that you need to achieve what you want to achieve, and that will be the most efficient way of doing it.